This one, what? I'm nervous as well. Why? What's up, you guys? I don't know. I haven't done ATA in like, how how long ago did you leave me? over a year. Over what? A year. No, I didn't leave you a year ago. I left you three months ago. <laughs> no, you left me in September. It's still not a year. Whatever. What's up, you guys? I am so excited for this episode. One, because Lana's here with me. And two, because I hope that this episode inspires you. So many have hit me up asking me, how did you launch your brand? How did you start your company? And today, Lana and I are gonna give you some tips on how you can also be a brand owner. I have to be honest, I don't know. I know for sure that one, I would never be as successful as I am without you. And two, I recognize that you really are a business genius, just the way your mind thinks when it comes to numbers. I'd say I'm definitely more creative and you are definitely more business oriented. You are numbers. I am the numbers, you are the art, for sure. So I love that and I just wanted us to kind of run you guys through how we started our brand, Lavoud. Obviously, we actually partnered with another company for XIXI, but the first time we ever launched a brand just on our own, from the ground up, right here, it was like Lavu. Yeah. So what would you say is step one? I think step one, you need to know what the company name or what the brand name is going to be, which you had a really good idea about, because we initially started as handbags. Yeah. And you were like, oh, a handbag is a woman's vault. So let's name it Lavu, because you know, she's so Parisian and Love French. French. Like, we, oui, we, oui. oui. oh. <laughs> she came up with the name. What when the nail ring you got me injures oh, me. Oh, sorry. But okay, Lana, you're really smart in this way uh -huh. and really business savvy. The moment I tell you that I have a name, that I have in mind, what's the first thing you do? Well, the first thing I do is I Google it. The first thing Adrian does is go on Instagram to make sure the name is available. I'm like, you know Instagram is not a government agency that could just protect your rights. So she was like, the name is available, grab it now. So we grabbed the name. One, Google it to make sure that no one else has the name that you're looking then for. Then Instagram. Then check your socials, make sure that you have Instagram, especially if you're gonna be a direct to consumer company like we are. Mm -hmm. Our Instagram really is the place, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. those really are important for our sales. Social media is definitely. It's an important marketing tool for sure. So, we always go with shop, cause shop XIX I worked out first. So I like to keep that continuity. Continuity is like when you're branding something, you want to make sure that you keep it the same for everything because mm -hmm. that just helps people yeah, to remember. Yeah, so I think like Le Voot Lounge was $1.99. ShopLeVoot.com was probably like $10.99, so it worked out. Right now, if you are sitting wherever you are and you have a desire in your heart to launch a brand, whatever your passion is, and you're like, okay, I have this name in my mind, I have this idea for what I want it to be, you have to have the concept ready. I love going to Home Goods or like just any kind of store like that, and you buy those journals oh. that have like inspiration on the front Manifest of them. Manifest Queen. Yes, so I will get a journal and literally write my bootleg business plan. This is the name of the brand, this is how I see it growing with like an umbrella above and just how it works. So I know the boot was the brand and then that became the umbrella or the hub for all the things I wanted to do in fashion and I don't know, maybe even beauty one day, but it really can encompass all of those things. Lavoot started with vegan handbag luxury line, which I was super excited about. That was gonna be affordable and super chic and high end. At some point we looked at each other and we're like, we've been wearing loungewear at the beginning of the pandemic and then we're like, Lavoot lounge like it's a lounge that you chill in and that's the clothes you wear and then i had the third idea which was to launch lavoot suits coming stay soon. tuned when we first did handbags i was like okay cool this is great when she wanted to do loungewear at first i was like okay and i didn't really take the idea seriously then like the next week she called me, she's like, so where are we with loungewear? And I was like, oh, you are serious. Like we're actually doing loungewear. She's like, yeah, I want to do loungewear. So then that whole thing just rolled out and Le Voot Lounge was the like greatest experience. I just didn't realize so many people wanted fashion from you. At an affordable price. It's very affordable. And that was really important to me always with both of my brands from XIXI to Le Voot, that we actually do things that even if they were luxury, they were accessible and attainable. Mm. So that to me was really important because I know what it feels like to be that girl who wants and watch something. And you just, yeah, I'm in the projects, I can't afford this. Projects. You know? 
I believe in a poor man's trademark. Lana believes in a real sure. government sure. trademark. I reached out to a um, an attorney so she could trademark our brand. So she tried to trademark Le Vu on its own, but there was a little bit of a conflict. So if we trademarked Le Vu by Adrian Houghton, that we were completely in the clear because nobody could own her name. So that- In fact, you guys, no one- Could ever own could your name. Could ever own your name. They could never trademark your name unless you sign a document that allows them to trademark your name. Unless they have the exact same name as you. How does that work? Oh, I'm not sure. That's a very good- I mean, I would have to ask Natalia. <laughs> you guys, if your budget doesn't allow you, and let's just be super realistic here, if you are not in a space financially where you can obtain a trademark lawyer, then I'm just keeping it real with you. There is something called a poor man's trademark that a lot of people actually use in music publishing and just in general. And here's how you do it. You got an idea, you write it down. You write down your business plan, your thoughts, your ideas, what it is, how it works, especially specifically when it comes to like inventions mm -hmm. or something that no one's ever seen before. Be as detailed as you possibly can be. And write the date. And write the date on it, right? You're gonna fold it up, you're gonna seal it, you're gonna put a stamp on it. You are going to mail, when I say mail, like an actual USPS, USPS mailbox, you are going to put it in the mailbox and mail it to yourself. The key is that it's gonna be post stamped with the date and the year on it, and the key is do not open it. You hold on to it and you just keep it sealed because guess what? That actually stands up in a court of law that if someone ever takes your idea or your brand, you can actually say, no, I've had this idea in detail, written out, and it is postmarked and stamped. If you open it, it will not stand up in a court of law. That means you could have made changes to it, added to it. And I would say only do that for the shortest period of time until you do raise the funds and the financial backing to actually get yourself a proper trademark And attorney. now there's so many affordable places where you could do that. Like Instagram does it for like 200 bucks. So I, really? I think you should always, at least you should email a lawyer saying, hey, I have the plan to trademark yeah. this. It's what good. is that called? The paper trail. Yeah. There's also something called local trademark, which means that you can operate your business in your local state. And while, again, while you're getting the funds to expand, you can actually hold on to the name just in your local state. So that goes for like what, like 75 bucks? And you bucks? don't have to wait for a trademark. Our trademark was in process and we were already selling loungewear. Like That's true. It's, not the, the smartest thing to do. But it's the application is there. No one yeah. can try to take the name until, unless our name is denied or something. So Which it was not. Which it was not denied. But the application was there, so we had full rights to use it. Yeah, so if you're not getting a response quickly, don't worry. We too had to wait a very long time. Yeah, we, there's no shortcut. I was to... the person stressing Lana out, like, did it come yet? Did it come yet? No, did and when it yet? finally came, I'm like, here's your certificate. And we just got XIXI the other day, too. Yeah, so super great. exciting. So now that you've got your brand and your name and your trademark out of the way, you gotta actually make it happen. You actually now have to create whatever it is that you're selling or that you're making with your brand. The next step is finding your manufacturer. manufacturer. So initially I went on Google and then from there I reached out how to How do you every... find the manufacturers? Like how well, do you Well, I put Google? like um, handbag manufacturer in Google and there's a list of them that show up. I reached out to over 20 before I found the one that we wanted to work with. Yeah. We got a lot of samples because I used multiple manufacturers to see exactly what we wanted. Quality wise, quality that was wise. really important to me was the quality, but how much does that initially cost to get those samples? I think like for a startup you should have have maybe like $400, $500 set aside. And the great thing is, as soon as you receive a sample and you don't like it, they'll send you a second sample or a third sample because these people want to gain your business. Exactly. You don't need them, they actually need you. With or without you, like they're still operating, but if they have a plan to make more money, that obviously works in their favor. So I feel like as the buyer, you actually have the upper hand because you could negotiate. And that's kind of what we did with our manufacturers because there was someone that came up at a really high price and I was like, well, that means we would have to sell it for way more and we want to make this affordable. So that's pretty much yeah. it. And as soon as you go into production, they'll actually deduct your sample fees. Remember that and don't let anybody hustle tell you, you. Otherwise, don't get hustled. Because ultimately their goal is to have you do a huge order. Mm -hmm. They want you to then say, okay, I loved this sample. This looks amazing. Yeah. Now I'd like to order 500 of this mm -hmm. bag. So that's what they want. They want that big bulk order yeah. from you. So be picky, pay attention to details, 
find a manufacturer that pays attention to the details that are important to you. To me, I was like, it looks great. No. And she was like, no. We're Mine was, I wanted elevated hardware. We're talking zippers. We're talking the inside lining. Those things really, really mattered to me because that's what makes a luxury brand luxury. I feel like we had, for bags, we had like two trials. Uh, three. three trials, three yeah. trials. And then for clothing, Lord prepare me. That, <laughs> Lord. That one, I was like, Adrian, I don't think loungewear is meant to be ours. And she was like, no, no. we're going to get it right. Yeah. I promise you, it's okay if we don't. Yeah. And then when we launched, I was like, oh my gosh. I cried my eyes out. Why are you crying? It's not funny, because but... I just get happy. This is this I'm is your happy. dream come true? Yeah. Stop. I love Sweet. you. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. and happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. People have no idea how oh. how much work, resilience, time, effort, energy that we put in to our brands. So um, just seeing it literally sell out in one day on my birthday was... Not even one day, like hours. It was just yeah. unreal. Like I was overwhelmed with I gratitude the and then I was also overwhelmed because I was not prepared. <laughs> that definitely is super important. Find yeah. your manufacturer, reach out to them. Um, if they are Negotiate. overseas, making sure that your communication is good, find someone that you feel comfortable talking to. Mm -hmm. I probably talk to them more than I talk to my own friends and family. Like, that's just real life. Yeah. And we, I stay up late because there's like a time difference. Yeah. But it's also really important as well. We're Instagram friends. Yeah. Like, I know this sounds weird. You also want to create a, a, a work relationship. relationship that stems from respect. Mm -hmm. And now we have such a great relationship that we're just like, hey, we drew this up really quick. Can you see what you could do with it? And yeah. then we just receive samples daily. Like it just doesn't stop. It doesn't yeah. seem like it because we don't launch often, but. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's Alana because I'm the person saying, hey, I have this idea. And it's like hey, all of these idea. ideas are accumulating. And I'm like, hey, when do you plan to launch this? Like, did it's you really? It's coming soon. It's because I'm extremely picky, but I think that that's, what makes you know a great brand is you're yeah. not just throwing just anything out there, but you're paying attention to the details. Yeah. Like I and recently, she will wear it. We wear our pieces. Like mm -hmm. currently, I've been rocking our knits, which are which amazing. are coming soon. But I've been wearing them nonstop for the last few weeks. Yes, yeah, she has over seventy samples. I'm like, hey, do you want to pick your top 10? I'm still testing them out. Yeah, because like, I think it's important. Okay, that's yesterday. I wore one of the pants. I tied it, and I could see the white from the from band. the holes from the band yeah, and i'm yeah. like this needs to be corrected materials i hate itchy um tags yeah. we just changed our tags again for like the millionth time because i am i'm really picky yeah. but i feel like you have I to hold yourself to a standard yeah. of excellence not just for yourself but for your customers mm -hmm. the next thing would definitely be budget and what people have obviously we can't tell you exactly because every company is going to be different and what their need on a budget level, yeah. you know, fluctuates. But here's what we think. I think Instagram is free, yes. obviously that's zero dollars. A domain should be less than $30. Yeah. If you're trying to buy a domain that's unavailable, do not try to broker it. You're never going to get the domain. Let it go, figure something Find else something out. Else. Pivot. P yeah, pivot. Pivots, I like that word. Shopify, you could build your own Love theme Shopify. in there. And then it's less than $20 a month for a basic package. There's no reason why you need, as a small startup, the ultimate package. That's just the yeah. truth. You don't need to pay a marketing company. Literally, Lana and I have been model, photographer, marketing. We're sitting there working on Canva, creating our own. Building websites. Like, we and do I it just on our found, own. And I did tell Adrian, that's the one thing that I love most. Starting from scratch and creating something and seeing the finished project. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Now you guys <laughs> handle the rest. Yeah. But that's the most fulfilling part for me to see it just launch. Yeah. But a lot of people at home are probably saying, well, I don't have a background in website building. You don't need one. Guys, I she literally doesn't have a background in website I building I built either. all the brand's websites. Like there's yeah. nothing. Actually, I didn't build XIXI, then we you modeled. You built Lavu, you it built Israel and New Breed. Then the, the future one coming. Yes. I really do believe in investing in yourself, especially as a woman of color, and especially because of my upbringing, my humble beginnings. The moment I really was in a financial position that I could 
invest in myself. I had opportunities to partner with people mm -hmm. and have them have ownership in my company. Now that's the thing. We're, we're not partnering with anyone. You have the means. I don't partner with anyone. So there's no reason why someone should take 50% of your hard work. It just doesn't make sense. And your me. vision. And your vision and your name. Yeah, so we are super hardcore in believing in self-ownership, especially for minority women, just how important that is to be self-owned, self-contained. Yes, it means you're gonna have to work 10 times That's harder. That's what I was just about to say. It's yeah. not easier. No. It's, it's, it's actually 50% harder. 50 harder <laughs> yeah, because, because you are 100% uh, accountable. I looked up what small business means and a small business, according to the government, is a business that uh, has less than 250 200. employees. Lavoot actually has five people that work for them. I'm CEO, Lana's the CFO, mm -hmm. Mariah is the creative director and the social marketing. media marketing. Then we have two family, like literally people that are like family to us are the people yeah. that run our fulfillment center. It being just this tight group of people I makes it, it so much more special. Cause I love it. Cause they actually care about us. Literally the day we launched, the person that was fulfilling the packages was myself, mm -hmm. Lana, Lana's brother, Laith, who we love. Jeez, my mom and, Late's relationship and Papa is... Joe and Israel. There's something also about that security of knowing what your customer is receiving. Like mm -hmm. I know exactly what you received because I packaged it. That's why when like people are like, oh, my order was messed up. I'm like, trust me, your order was not messed up. Because or I... sometimes you're like, Adrian was packaging. <laughs> your order what may have, have been the... messed up. <laughs> Adrian even signed it. I'm like, oh, for Adrian oh, signed Adrian it, signed it. It's your definitely order is definitely up. wrong. I love that we did this together because like you just said, you yeah. really can't pay someone to care. At all. At all. You can pay someone, but either their heart is in it or their heart isn't in it. I truly believe with my whole heart that where there is a will, there is a way. But Adrian does this little thing. I believe in you. You could do it. I'm like, yo, she believes in me. I have to do it. I have to. <laughs> I'm like, build a website. You got this. No, but seriously, there's other things too where you're like, oh, I don't think that's gonna be possible. And I will stay up all night and figure it out. Yeah, that's very true. That's very... Yeah, but I feel very like... very strong-willed and that's what makes this whole operation successful. As much as she wants to say, oh, I couldn't do it without you. I'm like, I was not this person without you to the point where I'm like, if someone can't get something done, I'm like, they just don't care. Go watch a Shopify, build a website tutorial right after this. It's, it's so easy. So smart. Yeah. With that being said, you guys, our headquarters had actually gotten a little bit of renovations done to it. We moved into a different space. What's up, you guys? It's me again. Please don't vlog off. I promise I'll make this super quick. Welcome to our headquarters where almost everything goes down. So come on in. Before Adrian moved to New York, we actually used to have great grand meetings on this table. That's why there's only two chairs because the only people that were ever in the meetings is Adrian and I and sometimes Mariah on FaceTime. Someone from our fulfillment team can sit out here, reply to emails, print the packing slips, print the shipping labels on our handy dandy Dymo. We used to have a Keurig in here, but the girls have gotten a little bougie and now we have an espresso machine. Now we go into my favorite place in the world. When we first started, there was like eight racks and now we are at like, how many racks are in here? Well, we're at a lot of racks. That was all of Laboot Lounge. This is more Laboot Lounge. More handbags down there. Um, so let's start packing so you guys can see how many branded items we have. Once the order is completely picked, they hand it over to another team member who will start packing it. So we have upgraded our packaging with new Laboot tissue paper. So, you know, we're learning as we go. In case you guys didn't know, we are in Laboot. Laboot, Laboot. So this person ordered a bralette and a cold shoulder top, both in the color snow. So everything gets steamed so our customers don't receive wrinkled items. Yo, I have not done this in so long. I actually respect you guys. So we're going to pack this. At some point, we're going to need to move again and expand because suits are coming, knits are coming, Lavu X Home is here, and we are just, we're doing our best. So um, this small business turned really big really quickly, which we're so grateful for. All right, you guys, I hope that this was helpful. I hope it inspires you. I hope you learned a little nugget 
How do you feel? I feel good. I really hope to see more small businesses grow from this. And I, I really- That was our initial intention was just yeah. to be a small business, but because of you guys and just your support and how you make our dreams come true, blows my mind on a daily basis. I want to refer back to an old video of ATA where I said, I hate fashion. Honestly, God bless people that work in fashion. That's just not my field and I don't like it. Now I'm like, hey, what do you think of this? This is cool. I love you. I love you. I appreciate Good work. you. Love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure that you hit the notification button so that you are always notified when there's new episodes of what? All Things Lana. Just that kidding. too. All Things Adrian.